evening and uh, my name is Nashad Mazin and I will be uh, presenting the SAR results in simulated uh, in the test that we did in simulated brain uh, tissue under radio frequencies. Uh, again the theory of uh, electromagnetic waves is well established and as Dr. Einat uh, presented based on Maxwell's uh, equations uh, from which a wave equation is derived and this goes for both the electric field and the magnetic field. They're coupled and uh, those waves transport energy which is uh, described by the Poynton vector that is the rate of energy transport per unit area. Main char characteristics of the waves are typically the wavelength and the frequency which are inversely proportional. The lower the frequency the higher the wavelength. And there is a wide spectrum of, uh, of those frequencies in our daily life. What radio frequency electromagnetic waves are actually non-ionizing. And this at least put us on a little bit the safe side as uh, many people will claim that they do not break DNA uh, strands. They, they, they are not DNA damaging. But there is still some thermal effect and non-thermal effect associated with radio frequency electromagnetic waves. Typical frequencies used by the cellular companies, as in this case, uh, vary from 800 megahertz to 1900 megahertz. And this corresponds to a thermal, uh, thermal at those frequencies, there is thermal effect associated. Uh, we know some, uh, there are under studies, if you go above those frequencies, you have the optical range, but we're not concerned by that. Uh, what is known by, uh, about the electromagnetic waves? At low frequency, we know that the electric field uh, creates in humans surface charge and currents because we are conductors. And the magnetic field also creates circulating currents in the body. At radio wave frequencies, there is a heating process. And above an optical radiation, there is photochemical reactions. Again, just to follow up with what Dr. Einat said, scientifically, uh, it's undecided. We have lots of publications that make some claim of uh, genotoxic effects. And uh, you can see that there is a lot of them. One of the paper that has a summary of those is by Rudiger. And the same thing goes for people who claim that there are no effects. And there are also lots of papers and many others also scientific, sci other scientific papers have also, also anal uh, investigated other claims. And the answer is still inconclusive. So if it is inconclusive, and at the same time we know that about 20 to 80 percent of cell phone radiation penetrates at least two inches in an adult brain and probably three times more in a five-year-old, should we worry about this? The question is simple. The, que the answer is the precautionary principle, which states that if an action or policy has a suspected risk of causing harm to the public or the environment, and in the absence of scientific consensus, that the action of policy is harmful, the burden of proof is that it is not harmful falls on those who take the action. And in this case, we are taking actions. So the burden of proof is not upon us. But we do this under the FCC regulation. If somebody comes with a product and wants to make some claims or, make some, or, or provide some findings, he still have to do it under the FCC. And the FCC is clearly uh, provides limits for the testing and protocol how the testing is, uh, is meant to be done. In, in the SAR case, they have uh, a well-established protocol for testing. In this case, we use dielectric liquid that simulate the brain cell based on dielectric properties. And uh, 
uh, the test has a, the setup consists of a robot and the telephone or the wireless device is put by the phantom that contains the dielectric liquid and communicates with a base and we analyze the SAR values. This is a typical setup where you see the device on the test and the tissue simulating inside the phantom. So what does the SAR test mean? We look for a, uh, a distribution of the SAR values from a hot spot on the surface of the phantom and in depth into the tissue just to simulate or to study the electromagnetic wave propagating into this liquid that simulate the brain tissue. And the surface measurements uh, are well done around the hot spot to cover the radiation being dissipated in the, uh, on the surface and in the volume. Typical values are, like uh, Dr. Ennard said, are 1.6 for the head and 0 0.08. Uh, this is watt per kilogram for the whole body. Are there safe, uh, or is it possible to reduce the given SAR limits? The SAR limits clearly set by the FCC establish a threshold for safety. But any reducing factor that can bring this to a safe zone or a safe region can only be a contribution to our health. Typical brain tissue simulated liquids are also uh, given by the FCC. And before we do the test or before a test is done, there are specific values that need to be uh, tested prior to any test, uh, SAR test. And in this case, the dielectric constant and the conduct conductivity of the tissue. So our first, the first test that was conducted at, uh, uh, at a certified lab provides up to 77% reduction with a body well card. And if you look at this, these two pictures, the one on the top shows an SAR value, a, a peak SAR value of 0.246 watt, watts per kilogram. And with a body well chip, the peak value is 0 0.054. And this is 77% reduction. I, uh, from a scientific perspective, I can tell you that 77% is a very, very interesting reduction. And I personally am really impressed. This is a certificate provided by a certified lab that shows the 77% on a Galaxy S3 uh, done on a head on the right side of the head. And this is the, the plot of the SAR tests, of the SAR results. In blue, you see the SAR values without the body well card. And in red, the SAR values as obtained with a body well card. Another test showed with an iPhone 5 a reduction of 68.2%. And this was on the left side, on the left head, or the left side of the head. The same thing on the right head side gave us 63.5% reduction with an iPhone 5. And again, we repeated the Galaxy S3, and in this case, we had even a higher reduction. I was pleased with the 77%, and then I received a phone call confirming that we had, in fact, 80% reduction, so a better reduction than what I had initially. And we used also an iPad. We're concerned by children using wireless devices, and we had 34.8%, and this means a lot for a child. A child using a wireless device with electromagnetic uh, radiation, which effect are still unknown, any reduction is just a safety factor. If my son was using an iPad and I know that of a device that reduces the absorption rate, I will certainly use it. 
And uh, the question could be, but are we reducing the absorption rate or are we blocking or shielding the electromagnetic waves? It wouldn't make sense if we were impeding the reception or the emission of the cell phone. We did the TRP and the TIS testing. Those are also FCC uh, standard test, total radiated power and total isotropic sensitivity test. And they came conclusive, no impact on the TRP or the, uh, the TIS test. Body well card does not impede the, either the emission or the reception. It clearly states that the effects are on the simulated brain tissue uh, liquid. So the conclusion were that the body well card does not impede cell phone radiation and body well cards reduces energy absorption in simulated brain tissue. Going back to my uh, picture, so I have a threshold and I'm making the, I have findings and the body well card shows clearly that you can reduce that to a safe zone. And this is uh, at this moment where there is so much uh, debate on the harmful effect, I think it's a safe practice. And again, to present the body well cards, you just uh, put them on the back of a, your wireless device and get the benefits of this reduction. Conclusions, body well cards have shown significant reduction in SAR, and body well does not interfere with uh, cell phone emission or reception, and in light of inconclusive results from scientific research, and this is for more than a decade, uh, precautionary principle imposes adequate measures to reduce potential harmful effect of radio frequency. And the dielectric liquid that mimics the brain has shown positive results with the body well card. And this was conducted in a certified lab and following the FCC guidelines. Body well card is strongly recommended, especially for children and teens that are increasingly exposed to radio frequency electromagnetic waves. And if we have 50% in SAR, uh, this is certainly a very important safety factor. I, my background is aerospace engineering, and I can tell you in aerospace, 5% of safety factor is already very good. And here we're talking about 50% safety factor. In construction, the, the safety factor is probably 10 to 15%. So we are being modest in claiming that there is 50% reduction. But even at this level, I think it is safe to uh, uh, to say that uh, it, it's good to, we can claim, we can say that the body well card is safe to use. And I thank you for listening.